All right, guys, I'm Nicolette, and today we are talking about our home base. So this is the place that our children grow up. This is the place where we make memories. Sometimes we make good ones. Sometimes we make bad ones. And hopefully this is the place that our children will always feel safe and loved. And to help us understand how to make our spaces comfortable, healthy, beautiful, and also functional, I'm joined by Mindful Interior Designer, who also helps busy families make their homes work for them. And she's also a busy mom. So So thank you, Jackie, for joining us today. We, uh, well, I really appreciate uh, your time. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is a great opportunity to inspire other moms out there and let them know that um, everybody can achieve a beautiful space. So as I was thinking about this topic for a few days, I was thinking about all the places that I've lived over the course of my life. So, uh, you know, I started as a child, I grew up in one home and it was, you know, a wonderful big home with a yard and a pool. And then I moved out and, you know, I uh, moved in with my now husband and we had a bunch of second floor apartments and everything was kind of small. And each time I moved, um, you know, we had our son and then, you know, I tried to build on that and go a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And, you know, eventually this year we purchased our first home. And so, you know, I, I've learned a few things about kind of being functional with my space mm -hmm. um, when I don't have a lot of space. And uh, mm -hmm. I was thinking about um, what you said, and, and it's it's on your website. You shouldn't have to choose between having a home that's beautiful and one that supports your lifestyle. And I was like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, OK, but I kind of forfeited all that nice living space because my son is a slob. My dog is gross and I'm afraid everything's going to break and not look nice. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So how do you balance function with beauty? Well, finding balance like anything in life, um, it's not easy. It is a challenge, but it is possible. I think that you're not alone in that we all get to a point where we are so busy with raising our kids and um, making sure that they have everything that they need and um, nurturing our family. And then all of a sudden we just look around and we're like, I need something better than this. Um, so, um, but it is possible to achieve the balance of function and beauty. So if you are challenged with, for example, having toys all over the place and you have young kids, it might be a good idea to source and purchase a coffee table that um, has storage options um, mm -hmm. so that it looks nice when your friends come over for lunch, but it's also functioning for you as um, a piece of furniture that where you can hide all of your mess. And then also if you allow the dog on the furniture, mm -hmm. um, just make sure you're sourcing something that has performance fabric. Um, it's never form over function or vice versa. Uh, these principles truly do need to work together to make sure that you have a balanced home. And the things that we surround ourselves should be both beautiful and functional, or it's just not worth your time and money. So, well, yeah, I, I like what you said. Uh, I like I like what you said about uh, if you let your dog on the furniture. Yes, I do. Yeah. And my husband yeah. is not happy about it. That's fine. It's life. It happens. I know. And I do. You know what? I think I do make those decisions because, um, you know, for example, I love I love white furniture, which is obviously not happening here. Um, but I like some of the colors that I liked only came in, in certain fabrics and, and for the couch or, you know, and, you know, I was like, I can't do that. You know, we got to go with something that can easily wipe off or, you know, something that's easy to clean. So right. I, I think, I think I've made some good decisions, even though I was working mm -hmm. within, uh, some restrictions, but you know, mm -hmm. it's not exactly what I, what I love, you know? And, um, mm -hmm. I think that's also the the problem, and and I, now I'm I have this opportunity where this is my home. So where we lived before, I was renting. There was a really bad vibe in that home, which I don't know if you've ever encountered that with like a home with a bad yeah. vibe. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's feng shui is a totally different thing from interior design, but it is absolutely principles that you can work with when um, living in a home like that, like you were mentioning. So, yeah. So I, I've been excited about the vibe here. And, uh, you know, I, I was thinking, you know, how does your living space, right, impact kind of overall family vibe and your mm -hmm. sense of well-being? I think that's what I learned uh, from living there and then living here. There's a big difference. And it's not so much even anything I did, just the space itself. 
Yeah, so it has scientifically been proven that our environment is crucial um, to our health and happiness and the way of life. And in my opinion, our spaces need to be more than that. They need to be more than pretty. Um, they should positively support your well-being. And the way that I do this is paying attention to a few elements in the room, which are light. So where light is coming from and what kind of light is in the room um, naturally. And then, um, you know, what we're incorporating textures. Um, so you're saying that, yeah, you want to have the whiter sofa, you want to have the the softer things, but you know that maybe they're a little bit more delicate or they're a little bit more, um, um, they're gonna get uh, worn more easily, they're gonna get stained more easily or something like that. Um, color and then flow of each space. So, um, and, uh, so then I take all those elements and I incorporate them all according to the desires of my clients. So um, like I was talking about the performance fabric, just for any moms listening out there, if anything has the word Krypton on it, um, with the fabric that you are um, wanting to use um, that is actually the most uh, stain resistant fabric that you could possibly use. And I say, just go for it. If it's going to make you super happy to have a lighter couch versus the gray couch or the dark brown couch, you know, mm -hmm. that's very um, typical of, oh, it'll hide dirt. <laughs> um, sure, it might hide dirt, but if it's going to make you sad, then don't go there. <laughs> um, then in order to tailor a space for my client, I not only use good design principles and suggest smart solutions, but I also listen to clients. So I'll, I ask a lot of questions about who they are, what their likes and dislikes are about the space, and then just in general, um, try to understand their temperaments of not only the clients, the mom and dad, or the, the um, you know, the adults in the home, but also the kids, um, what they really want out of their home versus not necessarily just how they want it to look. So to answer your question exactly, how does your space impact your well-being? So I can easily compare this to getting out of bed and taking a shower in the morning and putting on a nice dress or at least brushing your teeth and getting ready for the day. <laughs> and doing this and taking care of yourself and dressing nicely, it makes you feel good mm -hmm. and it lists your mood and mm -hmm. it may make you feel more confident in yourself. Um, and if you take care of yourself, the benefit is a happier and more confident you. So the same goes for making positive changes in your home. If you live in a place that has been loved, has been thoughtfully organized and designed to suit your preferences, you are going to feel more loved and more content in that space. So, um, yeah, I mean, just go for it. If, if you want that uh, lighter couch, you want the lighter textures in that space, then you should you should fulfill those wishes if you can afford it <laughs> so don't go outside your budget we'll talk about that in a second but. yes and what do you have going on behind you here i want to i want to just go back uh, here i want to because this is just so beautiful here it looks like something out of you know a, a set so um, how did you i mean how do you go about or designing something like this what's right behind yeah. you so simple yeah, so I'm in my dining room right now, and I'm sure you can see the reflection of my glasses. I'm sitting next to a large window. Um, this is one of my favorite rooms in the house. Um, and behind me is a picture that was uh, is very meaningful to my husband and I. It hung in his grandfather's home. So we incorporated that. We took some color inspiration from that painting and then used that on the walls. And then I have a structured, you know, sort of sculptural mm -hmm. piece, a lamp, and then some... Um, just some vases that we've collected over the years that mean a lot to us and a record player <laughs> at, on a buffet oh, in our dining nice. room. Yeah. So, you know, so when I hear interior design, I think, well, that sounds fancy. You know, I'm not fancy. I'm not, you know, I can't spend all that money on interior design and I'm sure you encounter that a lot, right? Or, or yeah. moms who think, oh, I can't spend money on that. I've got all this other responsibility. So what do you say right. to that? Well, so I, on my website, it does say investing in self-care. So I would love for people to um, assimilate self-care with interior design, just as much as we do with going to the gym and eating healthy foods to make our bodies healthy and strong going to yoga and taking the time to meditate creates a calm and centered mind. We benefit the same when we take care of our spaces and surround ourselves with what we consider to be beautiful. And we will feel more beautiful and more content in the space. And I think everybody truly deserves to be happy. 
and be in a space that makes them feel content and comfortable. Um, well, so speaking about the word investment, when we devote resources to a place that you spend so much time of your life in, it is quite possibly the wisest investment that you could make. Um, of course, it's always, you know, there's a budget involved and money doesn't grow on trees. And to ensure that you feel good about the money that you're investing in, it's really important to have a well thought out plan. Um, so I have a great download on my website and I'm sure we could link it in the show notes. Um, it's called the real truths about timelines and budgets, and that breaks everything down into small steps and provides strategies for anybody thinking about a home renovation project before they start. So they don't, um, hit those pitfalls and they don't get into a situation where they don't know where to turn it if they're deciding to, you know, what, what they, what how they want the room to look or um, that um, now they've opened up a wall and they didn't understand that there was electric and ventilation <laughs> in the wall. And now that's going to cost a lot of money to change that. So um, when starting out with clients, I not only talk about how beautiful and life-changing the space is going to be, but also how much it's truly going to cost and how long it's going to take, because those are um, some really important um, foundations to get into place before you start. So um, I think the pitfalls can be scary. Um, not even necessarily talking about renovation. I mean, you could think about just buying a sofa. Mm -hmm. Um, what size sofa do I need? How large does it need to be? How small does it need to be? How, you know, how does that play out in the relationship to the walls, the four walls of my room? Um, there are a lot of people that, um, would like to make changes in their home, but are hesitant because they can't, they don't think that they can afford it, like you said, but um, it is possible to renovate on a budget, but on a mo on modest budget. Um, it just takes a little bit of extra planning, and that's absolutely fine. So, um, yeah. So let me ask you a question. I was just thinking about this as you were talking. Well, I've got two questions. All right, you just yeah. inspired me. So. Um, we have a basement here, right? Um, and it's kind of related to another question I want to ask you. If you could only pick one room in the house mm -hmm. to focus on, what would it be? But we'll get there. Um, our basement, so we are in a ranch, and um, the basement is, you know, finished. It's just a basement, and it's not, you know, there's no floor. There's no subfloor. It's dingy and dark, and, you know, mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking, you know, what do you say about the basement space? Like, how, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have basements that they can utilize. Could that be a space that's kind of like the, the go-to that really does something for your spirit as a mom? Absolutely. So um, since COVID, um, there have been the, the silver lining from my perspective in terms of COVID has been that everyone is trying to eke out every square inch of space that they possibly can to make it functional and beautiful for the family, which I think is great. Um, so I've done a lot of basement build outs um, over the past 18 months, a lot of um, where should we put the wall? How do we hide the furnace? Um, yeah. I've had one um, where they were just doing a straight up playroom for their kids, their entire basement. All they wanted was the mom just wanted all the toys in the basement. She wanted, you know, but she mm -hmm. wanted to be able to be down there with her kids and be able to lounge and have a good time too. So there's a lot of needs to consider when thinking about um, one space. Um, because you you are not going to be the only one that's going to be using it, right? Your husband's going to be using it. Your kids are going to be using it. So there's a lot of um, you know personalities and needs mm -hmm. to take into consideration. Um, your question is, what do you, what do I think about the basement? I mean, if it's a if it's an untapped space, you can put down some lighting, um, put down a great floor, make it really truly feel like um, there's some tricks you know that we can um, work with when in, in working with some of those elements. Um, and just make it totally your space. There's no rules. It's your house. Um, and, and just really go for it. The, the best projects, the, the projects that, that end up the most successful are those where the clients have truly gone for it and have listened to what they want out of their home and have achieved that and not worried about, well, it might you know, who's going to think, what, what, what is my friend going to think about that? Or what is my family going to think about? Just do what you want to do. And, um, and that is what is going to make you um, the happiest in the end. 
So funny story about the basement. It would take a lot more to make me happy than it does to make my husband happy because yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, we have side of the basement that was, uh, had no lighting. It was filled with cobwebs and crickets and we got the exterminator in there and he ran some wires and now there's light and he put a tool bench down there and I swear he did nothing but put a tool bench down there and he's got tools everywhere. It looks like the ultimate man cave with all, mm. he didn't even do anything. I was like, mm -hmm. wow, that was so easy. And I'm over here with this mm -hmm. giant part of the basement. He's got this tiny little corner and he really mm -hmm. made it feel like it was his, you know, right. I gave him, I gave him that little space and I took the rest. Yeah. How simple, you know, and, and I guess to your right. point, then you can do some things on a budget, you know, as long as you're mm -hmm. being true to you too. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, I think about, you know, how, how to make changes on a budget and you're saying, you're saying exactly the, the right thing. It is a very simple, um, thing. And if you can only do one thing at a time, that's mm -hmm. totally acceptable. So I think that in circumstances, like I mentioned earlier with the sofa or the coffee mm -hmm. table, um, that we just really need to set out and to purchase things that will serve your family, um, also long-term. So mm -hmm. as high a quality as that you can possibly afford, um, that is what I would suggest you go for. So if you have this entire room on the other side of the basement area mm -hmm. and you want to put a sectional down there or something like that, or, and you want to put a coffee table and a side table just to put a candle so you can just sit and relax and read a book mm -hmm. or, you know, do whatever you want to do. Um, just making sure that those are as high a quality as possible. Things are going to take a beating over time. That is right. just what happens. That's life. Everybody has, you know, things going on. I'm sitting at my beautiful dining room table and there's a big scratch right here from where my kid drug his trumpet case across it, uh, you know, about six months ago, but that's just going to happen. Right. Um, I choose to think that it adds character to the piece because now every time I look at that scratch, I think about my son playing his trumpet, <laughs> which is really cute. So, um, but if the pieces that you buy are made of high quality materials, they're going to last longer okay. than something that was cheaply made. And you don't want to find yourself having to replace these pieces year after year, you know, time and time again, um, because I've never met anybody that has time or money to waste. So mm -hmm. mentioning also though, it's uh, somewhat environmentally irresponsible of us to continue to purchase disposable furniture that we're going to toss out in the trash every few years. Mm -hmm. So um, it's always wise to invest in your home and in the things that we touch and that we use every day. So um, when people are doing a kitchen on a budget, I will consider suggesting that, okay, well, I know that um, we only have so much in the budget for a faucet, maybe you know, five to a thousand dollars for a faucet, but you are going to use that faucet multiple times a day for 20 or 30 years. That's mm -hmm. a lot of days. It's a lot of times that you're going to be touching that faucet, turning it on. If you even want to go for the voice activated faucet, then do it and then save some money on maybe a light fixture that will look pretty, but you're not going to be touching it. You're not going to be experiencing it right. all the time. Right. So, um, also, if there's only a few things you can change at a time, choose what's most important to you and start there. So maybe it is just the sofa and the coffee table you can afford right now. Save for a few months for the side tables and the lamps that you really want. And then in the meantime, just appreciate the coffee table and the sofa that mm -hmm. you do have. So achieving your goals one step at a time is completely acceptable. It's real life. Mm -hmm. um, it's not an HGTV show <laughs> where things are just happening, you know, overnight. Um, and it also just helps to take things slow to make us mindful of the decisions that we're making and the purchases that we're making to incorporate into our space. So the first step um, also in my design process is a design consultation where at the end is a complete, in the end we have a complete design plan that includes all the pieces that will be purchased for the space, as well as the timeline and the budget. And I'm um, having this creative detailed plan with the dimensions along with the colors and the fabrics and things of what goes into the space is always helpful when you're flipping through a catalog or you have an online sale that you were sent an email about and you see a rug or something that you like, you have the plan in place, you know right away how big the rug needs to be, what colors are going to be needed in that rug, what materials are going to be best for the space and whether or not it's in your budget. And then you can click purchase or not. <laughs> so um, with your basement, 
you know, measure out the space, figure out really what you want to do, come up with that plan so that when you do come across that, you know, piece that you really want to purchase, uh, it's there for you and you know that it'll fit. So there's no buyer's remorse. Um, you're hitting your target for your budget and you're achieving exactly what you want in terms of how you want the space to look and feel. And there's no impulsive bias because uh, no impulsive I'm guilty bias. of that for sure. <laughs> no impulsive bias. It is nice. I mean, we are so bombarded with Instagram and Facebook and all of these beautiful inspirational, you know, rooms and spaces. But keep in mind, those are magazines. Mm -hmm. They are um, photo shoots that have had professional stagers come in and um, place exactly the right way. I mean, just imagine your kids running through that space. If you feel good about that, then maybe that's the look for you. If you don't, <laughs> then don't go there. Just uh, it's okay to admire something and move on. Um, I think that you know, I think we're all guilty of imp um, impulsive eyes and, you know, really wanting to, to feel and look like that mom model in the photo, <laughs> but it's not typically real life. If you like something, pin it, cut mm -hmm. it out of the um, magazine or whatever, put it in a file, a digital file or a, a physical file and just sleep on it for a minute and then come back to it. Do you really like it or not? And then, then you really know how to move forward. And that's really the mindful piece of of interior design that I like to bring to the table too. So I, I so agree with that. I've been incorporating the practice of uh, putting a whole bunch of things into my shopping cart on various yeah. websites and not buying them. Um, oh, right. and, and so I, if I still want them in a few days, yes. let's see, you know, um, yes. then we can revisit it. But you know, I, you know how some people sleepwalk or sleep eat, I'm guilty of sleep shopping. So I've ordered things in the middle of the night. I've, you know, I guess I've woken up with this desire to buy something. I think the last thing I, I, I bought in the middle of the night was like a, a shelving thing. I don't know, on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And then because I was half asleep, it, I didn't read the description thoroughly. And it was in all these pieces and I had to put it together. It was just a nightmare. Mm -hmm. So I stopped sleep shopping, but, um, <laughs> I've never heard of that one. So that that's awesome. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just what we're used to. Um, but I think that if we, if we just slow down um, our day just a little bit and the process of um, really thinking through the plan and really thinking through our budget, um, it will serve us in the end much better than just sleep shopping <laughs> for sofas. Yeah. Right. So what I'm hearing then is to focus on, so, you know, back to that question, if you can only focus on one space, which right. one would you focus on? To me, what I'm hearing is it should be the space that you're almost in the most or the one that, you know, how do you determine that when you have a family? So is it the dining room or the bed? You know, it's not your bedroom, I guess, right? Well, I mean, some people just really love being in their bedroom and being away from everyone and having that time, you know, to yourself, especially maybe if you're a busy stay at home mom and you don't get out of the house as often as you'd like to, and your kids are on your legs all the time. Um, it really depends on each individual and each family and, and the way that they work together. So, um, what I consider to be the most important home, place in my home is actually my dining room where I am right now, which I was talking to you about earlier. Um, for me, this dining room is really important because it is space. It's the only space in our home that all four of us can come together and have an uninterrupted conversation. Um, it's multiple times a week. We're having dinner in here. Um, there are no screens or technology in this room at all. Um, there is simply a table that I'm sitting at, uh, um, chairs, a chandelier, the record player. Um, and that's it. There's, there's not, not like nice natural light in here. There's a place to lounge. There's a little sitting area over here. Um, but it's, you know, we have a lot of family heirlooms in here and artwork that remind ourselves of our family now, but for some families, the great room or the living room or the kitchen might be the most meaningful because that's where they congregate. And to others, it might be their bedrooms, but I would recommend that families are thinking about when they're thinking about a renovation project to tailor their home what, how they want to use their home. So what behaviors do they want to encourage and what brings them together? They may also ask themselves what area of their house is causing them the most stress. So I had a, um, 
a client who I had gone over to do a, an office consultation. And she said, while you're here, there's always that while you're here, can you take a look at, and then she said, I just don't know what to do with this mud room. I hate this mud room so much. Um, I don't know what to do. I've, I've shopped at Ikea. I've shopped online. I don't know how to organize it. I, it needs to be looking better than it is and functioning better than it is. So we actually had some custom cabinetry built. We put down some new tile flooring. Um, it was very simple, but it truly changed the way she approached her home. So it was the last room that she left each day when she went to work and got the kids ready for school. It was the first room that she entered her home in every day. So Walking into that space that was truly custom designed for her and her family, her kids knew exactly where to put their backpacks. The dog stuff was where it needed to be. And she said it just, um, it truly changed her stress level. It really decreased her stress level and the way that she approached the after school time, uh, you know, four o'clock to nine o'clock. Sometimes those hours in there can be very hairy. Mm -hmm. um, but she was very, she was much more calm. And so maybe that's the place you start is the place that you li like the least. <laughs> um, also, just because a room is labeled a dining room, you don't need to put a, you know, a dining room table inside of it. So for example, if the dining room is the largest room of your home and you never eat in there, mm -hmm. but you need a room to spread out with your young kids, then make that room the, the playroom and mm -hmm. lay on the floor with your kids and have a great time and cuddle and read and, and do what you need to do. So, um, it's really all about listening to your needs and, um, fulfilling your wants that way. I like that actually. Um, it's, it's funny you bring that up. Um, when we moved into this house, you know, mom was very critical because there was no formal dining room and, uh, you know, we're Italian, so everything revolves around food. And, you know, <laughs> so I, you know, there's like an Eden kitchen area and I had this giant table that I just really love. I love my table and it fits, but you got to kind of push it in toward the, uh, the bay window if you're really, but there's only three of us here. You know, what, right. what do I need to have a, a big dining room? And of course, now that I said that my parents and my grandmother are here all the time eating. So yeah. I, I, I jinxed myself there, but we have this um, loft area that like lifts up from the living room with the fireplace. And, you know, everybody was like, you should put a dining room table here make this the dining room. I said, first of all, talk about function. I'm going to walk right. through my living room with food to get to the dining room table that I'm right. going to do that. Walk up and down stairs and we'll never use it. You know, mm -hmm. even if they were here, I bet we'd be in the kitchen because that's where the food is. But mm -hmm. now instead we have this open space where we haven't put anything there yet because we really want to take the time to figure out what we want to do with that space. So yes. I have my son's desk on one side of it and it doesn't take up a lot of room and all of his reptiles are right next to him, but I have this whole open space that I can think about, you know, and not clutter it right away. So I, you know, I really like that if the space, just because there's a space for something doesn't necessarily mean you have to put it there. <laughs> right. Right. And, um, to your credit, you're living in the, in the house and trying to figure out how you and your family move about it. And maybe that space just stays open right now for your energy to flow and your kids to run around. Um, maybe you don't need anything at all. So um, it's good to be in the home for maybe a year if you can stand it. Yeah. Um, or even more than that, to really decide, do we really want to spend the money on the kitchen? Right. Or do we want to work on the basement? You know, yeah. so um, it, it's really, it's all about um, meeting your needs. And um, so good job for not impulsively doing what other people are telling you to do. You can thank my husband for that. It's definitely not me. I sleep shop. So he's a uh, right, right, level-headed right, one. <laughs> I said, I think we need a couch. Every time I see a garage sale or, uh, you know, one of those uh, estate sales, I'm like, let's go find a big chair. Nope. He's like, nope, we're not doing it yet. You're not turning this house into a clutter zone yet. <laughs> good. good. Well, not yet. Know, it's just important to have that aesthetic uh, design to like really have some inspiration, um, draw it out or, put it on, you know, make a collage somehow of exactly what you want so that when you do happen to stumble upon that estate sale and you do find what exactly what you're looking for, then that you can feel really good about making that purchase. I like that. Yeah. I like that. All right, Jackie. So before we let you go, you are also a mom. 
right? I mean, that's yeah. your number one most important job. And I was yes. uh, looking at your blog and it really, uh, the your your post about summer vacation really struck, uh, uh, yeah, really hit home for me because yes. I look so forward to the summer. I'm like, I love, you know, I'm on the East Coast. I want warmth and the beach. And, uh, you know, at the same time, it's almost bittersweet because I'm like, oh man, my son is home this whole time. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and you're like, okay, well, how do I get all of those business things done when I'm, you know, trying to do the mom thing and not feel guilty that he's home or he's bored or he wants my attention that he doesn't usually get during the school year the same way. So how do you, um, personally find that balance? Yeah. So thanks for bringing attention to that blog post. Cause that blog post was, I was talking to a really good friend, uh, also a client, but, um, we were friends before that. And, um, she said, are you looking forward to the summer? And I honestly could not say yes. Mm-hmm. Um, because it is so, you do feel so uh, like a piece of taffy, like, like pulled in both different, you know, two different directions when you are a working mom. And, uh, you know, it's just, especially a business owner. Mm -hmm. So, um, I wanted to write that blog. Most of the blogs that I write are answering questions, um, that I get most of the time for, from clients or the things that are just on my mind. Um, so I'm glad that you appreciated that. Um, I did get a lot of positive feedback from that. Um, so how I balance things, um, I am not going to say that I balance work and family well all the time. Um, I do have an incredible husband who is absolutely my better half. He's an entrepreneur also. So he understands the time commitment that it takes to get, that it has taken to get this business um, up and running and um, smoothly, you know, working. So he's also a great mentor for me. Um, He takes care of a lot and uh, is very, very supportive, but um, I'm, it's not a perfect balance all the time. I have learned some lessons on how to delegate. Um, so I have hired a great project manager and a business coach. And I've also delegated a lot of my social media, uh, I've hired a marketing manager. Mm-hmm. Um, and one thing I'd like to get better at though, is really celebrating the milestones and the goals that I've achieved. Because I think as a small business owner, it's important to reflect on our accomplishments and take the time to realize all that we do, especially as moms, um, there really is never enough time in the day. Um, so I think just, I would like to get better at patting myself on the back more often, whether or not that's, you know, um, achieving something in my business or just being able to spend time with my kids that is, um, uninterrupted and Mm -hmm. unencumbered by, you know, any other responsibilities that I need to be taken care of. Um, so yeah, that's, I, I don't do it well. I don't think anybody is, needs to do it well. I think we all just need to um, realize that we're all trying our best and give ourselves a little bit of grace. Uh, I know that I give my friends and my family grace and I should give myself that too. So, um, but I, I do need to work on that a little bit. <laughs> it's hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever feel like your only, I, I sometimes feel like I can only give all of myself to one thing at a time. So it's yeah. like, if I'm really into, okay, let's, we're going to have the best weekend and, um, doing all this family stuff or coming back even from a vacation and actually taking that vacation. And thank goodness for my wonderful partner who, you know, is my backup. So I can actually do that without any devices. Yeah. Um, but you know, when we, when we have that, I feel like it's very difficult for me to then like, that's it. That's all I'm focused on. And when it's work and there's something big going on here, I kind of suck at the mom thing. I'm like, Oh, oh yeah. One is it I can I have both? <laughs> oh yes. Yes, we can. Um, to an extent, I think, <laughs> I mean, the glass is only going to hold so much water. Okay. So um, what is our focus going to be? I think that, um, ensuring that our kids are safe and healthy with, you know, if we, if we choose to do childcare or we choose to do, um, you know, shared time with our partners or, or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that moms always have their kids first in mind. Um, there's always going to be that mom guilt. Um, but I think that, you know, 
but realizing that it's a natural, normal thing that's never really going to change um, and just accepting the things uh, you can't change and changing the things you can. I think that there's some sort of mantra surrounding yeah. that, but, um, you know, I think that that's um, the only healthy way to move forward. And, and just knowing that we all have choices to make, um, it doesn't have to be um, hard. It's all really about our, our perception of really what is hard. You know, I mean, I think that we, so many of us, there are so many blessings that come our way, even each day. And um, just to realize all of that and just stay present is, is important. So. Well, Jackie, thank you so much for coming and giving me some inspiration. Uh, I'm thinking mm -hmm. about that basement in the back of my head, but um, <laughs> Uh, I, I just want to say thank you so, so much. And, and if you could let everybody know where they can learn more about you and your work, um, please let us know. Yeah. So um, my website is Jackie Barnes design um, and com, And there's a gallery on there that you can see um, every, all of my work. Um, you can subscribe to my blogs. Um, I do send out newsletters when I do post a new blog. So you don't ever have to miss anything there. Um, there are several downloads that are on my website in terms of guides and helpful hints to get you started if you're ready to, uh, if you're feeling ready to um, begin the process of planning your renovation. Um, and we are also currently working on a, an, a style guide. So really a fun place to go on the website where you'll be able to um, uh, take a quiz on what sorts of styles you like best. And then it will lead you to some products that are, um, you know, endorsed by me. And then you can uh, really go from there and see what works in your space. I'm always happy to do um, a design consultation if you're in the Cincinnati area and um, good luck. It should be fun. You should be enjoying your transformation. Um, your home and your money are two very sacred entities that we have. Um, and, um, you should be, you should be rewarding yourself with these sorts of, um, transformations and not getting so bogged down on the stress or, or worry of it. Just really go with your gut and trust your instincts and, uh, you can't go wrong. Thanks again, Jackie. You're welcome.